Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. You woke up this morning, give God the praise. Give Him the glory. You know, you got somebody that's always with you. Communicate with them. Talk with them. You know, you, you just don't know what you did when you gave your life over to Christ. You opened up the floodgates to your heart and your soul to God. And you let them in. And your goal is to keep in contact with him. He's looking for man and men and women after his own heart. If you love God, you seek him more. It's a daily thing. It's not just you go to church and give your life over to Christ and then you forget about him. No, this is a daily thing. It's a daily program. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know why God has me talking about marriages again, but I got to trust what God wants me to talk about. Maybe somebody needs to hear this. Who knows? Let's read from Hebrews chapter 13, starting with verse 4. Actually, I'm just going to read 13, 4. Marriage is, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. For whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. If you read through the New Testament, you're going to hear a lot of things about marriage. Even when he give instructions on the church leaders, marriage. But I'm going to talk about a marriage. And everybody loved the, the Ruth Boaz story, the Abraham Sarah story. Certain stories they love about marriage. But I'm gonna give you a story today that not so glorious, not so beautiful, but it still has the principle of marriage. Let's go over to one of my favorite books when I first found God and I read this and I just saw myself in it. And the thing is, I see myself in a lot of these stories, these, this history, let's put it that way. But they're not just stories to me, they're facts. You know, and it's like we bounce around on certain things. Like nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody even likes to read from this story too much. I haven't even seen pastors talk about it, but I've read it. Hundreds of times in my life so far since I gave my life to Christ. And it's one of the stories about marriage that I just don't understand. But marriage is not necessarily something you need to understand. According to your own feelings and your own beliefs. Marriage is something you need to understand from God's perspective. Let's read Hebrews 13 one more time. One more time to see what God's perfect will for your life is. Now, I'm not saying everybody's meant to be married, but you might want to think about this long and hard in your heart. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, with whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. I read the Hosea, one of the craziest love stories, but it got a lot to do with God and his grace and his mercy. Mm. How he can bring change to a situation, through a marriage. Mm. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Beery, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said unto Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and a children of whoredoms. For the land have committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. And this is a commandment to Hosea. Take you a wife of whoredoms? Hmm. Amazing. God's will is so perfect and it's so easy to understand, but a lot of people don't understand 
<clears throat> so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For you a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause this to cease the kingdom of Israel kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo Ruhamah. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bare a son, then said, God, call his name Lami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it said unto them, You are not my people, there shall be said unto you, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of God, of Judah, and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That shall come up out of the land, for great shall it be the day of Jezreel. Now, I'm not going to read all of it. Just imagine it. God's will for your life is to marry this type of person so he can deliver the land. It's honorable. You know, we live in a world where. We think everything's supposed to be laid out perfectly. God's going to hook you up with the perfect wife, the perfect husband. Perfect for you. <laughs> we could be so far from the truth. You ever think about marriage? Its purpose is for to execute God's will <laughs> for your life and the life of others. <laughs> but nobody likes to talk about Hosea. I done heard so many sermons about marriage. <laughs> oh, you got to get the the best. I mean, let's think about it. A marrow, a wife of whoredoms. Right. That sounds like an unbelieving wife to me. But the thing is, when God has a purpose for your life, and he want to do something to you, so his will can be accomplished, does it really matter? <laughs> you see, the Bible says all the time, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You see, people, the Bible does say be not unequally yoked with non-believers. It does say it. But when God has a purpose, God has a purpose. Now, let's go to somebody else. Samson. Go love a wife of the Philistine people. Go love a woman of the Philistine people. An unbelieving, non God fearing woman. And they said, Why did he do this? His parents even were confused. Why did he marry this type of woman? Why did you marry a child of Israel? Because God started occasion with the Philistines. Hmm. You see, people. I'm going to tell you some things in regards to my life that makes make my life makes a lot of more sense to me <laughs> because I understood that I understood nothing. <laughs> you understand? And I'm going to tell you the story today. Let me pause and I will continue. <laughs> 